Hi YouTube! So lately I've been receiving a lot of requests about making a, an equipment trailer and recently I designed and printed one and this is it right here. I actually made two versions of this trailer. One is the standard version and this is the extended version which is 14 centimeters longer. Now this trailer is entirely 3D printed, but it does have some reinforcements here and there. Uh, let's see underneath here. We've got threaded rods, 8mm threaded rods going all the way through this frame. And they come out here with lock nuts on each side. Now I'll explain more about that later. And we also have threaded rods, 8mm threaded rods going down here and all the way underneath or on the top and then we have threaded rods going from here and in. So even though this is 3D printed uh, these rods will stiffen it up quite a bit. Now as you can see the kingpin is also 3D printed and you can adjust it where you want to have it on your truck. And I've done some modifications for this cable right here. Now, this is just my way of doing it. I'm sure there are, there's a lot of better ways to do this with the wires, but this is just how I do it. <laughs> and of course we got the support legs. Uh, this is now upside down. Let's flip it around again. So these, let me turn on the lights. So these support legs, uh, they are manually operated. I didn't make any electric legs for this yet. So what you do, you just press this one in like so, and then pop this up. So you want it down, you just press it down. Yeah, easy. So, and about the top deck, these plates right here, I've included a lot of different uh, files for them, so you can pick and choose whatever you like the most. And all of these are the same length, so you can use them wherever on the top deck. And I also provided uh, a lot of different middle plates as well. So you can customize your trailer to have it the way you want it to be. And there's also this front uh, railings or you you have two different railings to choose from or you can run it without any railings at all now these are just plastic welded onto the top of the trailer well moving back on the trailer we have electric ramps now these are not manually operated they are operated by an electric actuator the actuator sits underneath here I'll show you that in a minute I'll just show you this first that I designed this to be shock proof or I wanted it to be flexible so that you don't break the small linkages right here so these can actually take a little beating and it's the same when you lower them down uh, one can be level and the other can be a little offset so if there's a bump right here when you lower them down that that's okay it won't be a problem so let's see underneath here you can see the actuator and this is the flexible uh, coupler that I made for you can see that it flexes now this is why you can move this one and the other one stays in place now this actuator is a 21 millimeter actuator and I recommend using 96N on the force or on the strength for the actuator. And this actuator sits in an actuator mount which can be removed by four screws so it's easy to do maintenance or whatever. If you have to take it off these four screws and these two screws on the springs. So the suspension on this trailer is also entirely 3D printed. Now, as you can see, it functions quite well. Uh, now on this trailer, I have installed the softest springs 
and in the files I I think I have four different springs and these are the softest ones so you can adjust this trailer uh, to fit the machine that you're transporting and also the axles are 3d printed now in the files I included two different axle types now this is the fin one <laughs> this one flexes a lot and there's a fat one so I have a fat axle right here and this is how it looks compared to the fin one yeah and these tires they are also 3d printed I 3d printed them with the TPU and I'm very happy with how they feel and how they look but in the files there's also rims for lesser tires like these so that's probably everything you need to know about the trailer so far so I'm going to be building a standard version trailer now which is uh, shorter than this one I've got all the parts printed and let's just begin the build <laughs> So this is the front of the chassis, uh, the main beams will now be added behind it and I've got them right here. Now if you look in the back side of the main beams you can see that they are lettered A, B and C. You want all the letters to line up on the same side and now I'm going to put a threaded rod now this is a 8 millimeter threaded rod I'm going to put it through all the frame pieces and into these holes on the front and then I can mark where to cut this rod So now that I have marked where to cut the rod, I will do the same on this other rod. I'll put them side by side and cut them at the same length. Now I left about one centimeter or one and a half centimeter outside the holes. That way I have enough room for the lock nuts. So I'm going to be cutting these now. So the rods are now inside the chassis and don't worry if they stick out a bit, that's okay. There's plenty of room back here. It can be a bit uh, tricky to get the rods inside the chassis, but if you use a drill like I did, it will be no problem at all. So these are the leftover rods that I have and I will now be using them to reinforce the front. Uh, we will have rods going down these holes and also on the front. So I will be cutting these now. Uh, two of them will be 7 centimeters long and two of them will be 14 and a half centimeters long.
So here's the suspension pieces for the trailer. Now I know that these springs they might look stupid but they will be hidden underneath the trailer so no one will see them. Now these springs are entirely 3D printed and they are super soft. Uh, this will give the trailer a more uh, realistic feel and yeah you'll see once I get the trailer finished and put a loader or something on top of it. Let's assemble the axles and the suspension. So this is the rear part of the chassis. Now this will sit back here and these are the mounts for the ramps and the way you want to mount these A-links or what you want to call them. You want to mount the biggest hole on the inside and the smallest hole on the outside like this. So these are the linkages that will uh, move the ramps up and down. And this is the flexible linkage that will go between these. So it will sit right here. Now it's important when you mount this piece to these links that this flat side is mounted downward towards the ground. So this is the way you want to mount it underneath there. Not like this, but like this. So I noticed a problem and that is that the actuator is actually touching this wall right here. Now it shouldn't do that, uh, it didn't do that on my other trailer so I guess I'm going to have to uh, make a little change on this piece. Uh, right now I'm just going to take off the screw and grind down the actuator a bit to make it fit, uh, but I'll make a change on this piece and update the model. So this will probably fix the problem.
So here's the side rails or the side pieces for the chassis. Uh, I'm going to screw them all together now and they have the same letters as the main beams on the chassis. So you got A, B, C and D. And of course the front ones they don't need any letters because you can already see what they are. So, Oh and by the way uh, this hole right here I think one of these holes were edited out on the newest update. Now I printed these before the update so I won't put a screw in this hole right here. Okay, so these are the support legs for the trailer and I will be showing you how to assemble them. Let's see, turn on the lights. So this is a spring-loaded system and you take these two parts like this, put them into each other like, like so. Then you take a 2mm screw, it's a 2x6 self-tapping screw these are very small let's see here you screw it in like this then you move this one into it like this then you take another 2x6 self-tapping screw put it in the top here this so here's the release mechanism I'm going to have to put this one tighter in yeah there we go so now we just uh, line up these locks with the lock in here So I'll do the other one off camera. So here we have the the wheels for the trailer. Uh, I will be using lesser tires on this trailer, and uh, I also included uh, files for the tires if you want to 3D print them in PLA or even TPU whatever you want the files are in there 
and you don't have to buy these tires because these are expensive now these bearings they are 3 by 8 by 4 so they are pretty small but they are perfect for this application just put them inside here make sure they don't fall out like this it's probably easier to uh, take the tires on the rims before you put the <laughs> bearings in this this will probably fall out now yeah <laughs> so I'll be mounting the tires to the rims now I just have to cut open all the packages So the tires are now mounted onto the rims. Uh, you can glue them on if you want, but I won't be doing that. Uh, anyway, I'll put all the bearings in now and I'll mount the wheels to the trailer. And I'll be using these screws to mount the wheels onto the trailer. So all the wheels are now mounted up and this feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> so the trailer is almost finished. Uh, I put my soldering iron on there because I'm going to plastic weld uh, these front pieces and also the top railings around here. I have them right here. So I will be plastic welding them on the front and yeah let's just begin filling the top deck and let the soldering iron warm up. So that's the top deck mounted on and I think it looks pretty damn good. So now the soldering iron is hot enough to plastic weld the front piece onto here. So I'll do that now. So here you can see that I plastic welded the front onto the frame. Uh, it doesn't look very good, but it works. <laughs> so now we gotta glue these pieces onto the top here. I'm not going to glue them just yet because I'm going to paint the trailer first. I'm not sure if I want these to be the same color as the trailer. Now, anyway, um, I have forgotten to 3D print the top pieces on the ramps and also the top pieces that goes here. But I will do that before paint. And yeah, the trailer is almost completed. It's standing on its own legs and everything. <laughs> Let me clean up the bench a little bit and uh, I can put my truck here and mount the trailer onto it. So here we have my semi truck. It's a Mercedes and it's not a Tamiya but it's a Hercules hobby and they're about the same size. So let's try to hook on the trailer. Yeah.
So I will hook up some wires to the actuator now and we can try the ramps. So the ramps works and I'm going to show you uh, the dead zone on the ramps now. As I said earlier that they are shockproof. They can take a hit if you're unlucky. They won't break. So I'll run them down. So I'm going to put my battery underneath one of them. And even though the battery is there, one of them will hit the floor and the other one will lay on the battery. So this battery won't stop both the ramps from going down. So you can unload and load the trailer on an uneven surface. Uh, yeah, I think you understand what I mean. Now I'm going to run them uh, halfway up and I'll show you the dead zone. So this is the dead zone I'm talking about. This is what saves them from getting destroyed by shock or if you hit them with something. Anyway, that's the ramps explained and now it's time to see what kind of load this trailer can take. I'm going to bring some of my machines in here now and put them on the trailer and see what happens. <laughs> So here you can see my Volvo L120 loader on top of the trailer and keep in mind this is the standard trailer this is not the extended version and the loader fits perfectly on there. As you can see there's no flex at all on the front and the suspension seems to have a lot to go left yeah. So I'll show you the suspension now uh, with the machine or this loader on top of it. I'm just going to unhook it from my truck. Let's see here, we get a good grip. Yeah, you can see how the suspension works. And keep in mind, this is the softest uh, suspension there's still uh, three more options on the springs to choose from and they are all stiffer than this one. So that's the Volvo. I'm going to bring a heavier machine and put it on top of the trailer now. So here we have my 973 loader. Uh, this one is a bit heavier than the Volvo. So let's see how it goes. I really should have the pieces that I didn't print under the hair now. It's just sliding on the tracks. I'm gonna reposition and try again.
There we go. <laughs> yeah, the trailer has no problems with this loader either. Yeah, so far it's looking good. Well, let's try something oversized for this trailer. Uh, this loader is about 9 or 10 kilograms and the Volvo was 7 or 8 kilograms. Now the next loader I'm going to put on here is a full metal one and it's 20 kilograms so let's see how that goes. Now I'm going to say this before I try it that this trailer was never meant for something that big. Uh, it was meant to transport one of these. <laughs> so putting a 20 kilogram loader on top of this trailer uh, it was never meant for that. Anyway, let me get the loader and let's try. Now this loader is a lot wider than the trailer. So loading it up can be a bit tricky. I'm going to cheat a bit and manually adjust this so that it doesn't fall off. Yeah, let's just try it right there. I'll try to run it a bit more forward just to see if the front flexes. So far uh, the front of the trailer doesn't flex at all, which is a good sign. Now I'm very... gotta be careful here. Yeah, you can see that the trailer, the front of the trailer doesn't flex almost at all. Yeah, I'm super happy with this. Now I'm sure that this axle right here is probably bottomed out right now. <laughs> but with a stronger spring, uh, I think this will work, actually. Just to show you how much wake this on the trailer. I'm going to poke the loader. Yeah. Well I'm going to say that this trailer is a success and I'm going to unload the trailer now. Let's see how that goes. <laughs>
So here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the standard version and the extended version. As you can see, there's not too much of a difference. The only difference is that this one is 14 centimeters longer. So if you plan on transporting a dump truck like the Cat or the Komatsu, uh, you will need the extended version. Uh, or you need some ramps here so that the rear wheels can drive up onto on the standard version. Now, also, I released a new update for the Cat 730. The new update for the Cat uh, lifts the entire chassis 5 millimeters up and moves the rear wheels a little more backward which makes the model look really good uh, much better now than it was before i'm very happy with it now it looks much more aggressive now than it did before anyway uh, that's a side by side comparison between the two trailers and that wraps up this video uh, i'm going to paint the trailer off camera and also I need to print the missing pieces on the ramps as you saw the track loader had a hard time getting onto the trailer without them so I'm going to 3d print them and put them on before paint anyway that's it for now uh, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up <laughs> and I'll see you soon bye bye